All right, what's truly good with you guys? You guys asked me to do an official review of the Push 3, so I'll be happy to do that. Let's get right into it. So let's talk about the ins and outs of this bad boy. So we have our power button, which you can power this thing on and off by just hitting this over here, this little yellow button. Then we have our headphones, which is dope. And that corresponds to the new cursor over here, where if we actually tap this thing, we can actually tap over to the different outputs. So we have our headphone output and we can turn this up and down to control the headphone volume that way. All right, next we have our pedals one and two, and you can actually swap this out for additional CV gates by going into your settings. Then you can go to pedals and CV, and then you can actually change it from trigger to CV out, and you can change this from sustain to CV out as well, which is dope. And this is stereo. Next, we have our USB type C to connect to our computer. Now, for the case of this video, this push three is 100% standalone. So we do not need a computer. So you don't see any uh, connections that way. The only thing we have connected is our audio ins and outs. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But this is how you will connect your push three to your computer if you want to use this in controller mode. Next, we have our power connection. Now, this bad boy is supposed to get two full hours <laughs> of a charge at one time. All right, then next we have our USB type A here, and this is to connect other instruments like another MIDI controller. You can actually connect a hub to this thing and have multiple controllers running uh, in tandem with the Push 3, which is a nice touch. But we'll talk about that same thing being a con in just a minute. All right, so next we have our MIDI in and out. Now this is gonna be via eighth inch. So you're going to need some type of converter if you wanna do some type of traditional MIDI with the five pin cable, you could just get a converter like on Amazon or something like that. All right, then next we have our eight at in and out. So this gives you eight additional inputs and eight additional outputs. Now I am a drummer, so uh, at some point I wanna test this out, uh, playing some drums in this bad boy and being able to just do some cool stuff with that. So that comes in handy for if you're handling multiple instruments where you need multiple mics. And then we have our two inputs and then we have our two outputs. Now to get into detail with the built-in interface of this thing, which is another dope feature, we could just come over here to where our mixer button is, which is right here but we can press it twice. And now we have access to our audio inputs. So we have a new layout, of course, and let's start with from the left to the right. All right, so we're gonna come over here to our files button. And this is basically where we can load up our sessions directly from the push. If you've done something on the push, you can save it and recall it here. Basically this has Wi-Fi embedded in so you can connect this to your local Wi-Fi and make sure that the desktop version of Ableton uh, is connected to the same Wi-Fi. And what will happen is, is we can come over here to our desktop version of Ableton and we can come over here to push and we can see all the projects that we have on our push and we can drag and drop any of these sessions over to our desktop or vice versa. We can come over here to any of our desktop sessions, let's say this one, and we can just simply drag and drop it to our push that way, which is a nice touch as well. So this is fire, I like this a lot. However, this is the only way you can do it. So remember me mentioning the USB type A earlier, the con of that is you cannot use a USB stick to basically recall sessions or load your sounds in like you would like an MPC. So that is a limitation. So keep that in mind. If you're considering getting this thing, you really have to be all in on the Ableton ecosystem. Mm -hmm. I also want to include that this does not come with the full version of Ableton. So you're going to have like the Ableton light. I'm sure that comes with this. So if you want to use like the full version of Ableton, you will need to purchase that separately. So I'm currently on Ableton live 12 suite. So this is going to correspond to that. Now moving on, we have our settings button. And this is where, again, where we were for our CV uh, inputs and stuff like that. But we have all of these different uh, corresponding different things you can control and change in your settings. Then we basically have our information button where you can get started with the push. 
uh, learn about different things, get different tips and stuff like that. And this is also where you'll be able to set up your push. And then this button over here is basically for if you want to put this in user mode and just customize this to correspond to whatever you want to do. Then coming over to the right, we have our devices. And this is basically going to correspond with whatever device you're currently on, whether it's an effect or an instrument. Then we have our mixer. Then we have the actual clip that we're working on. So this would represent if you had MIDI, this will show you your MIDI. And this will also show you, in this case, the audio. And then, of course, we have our beautiful session view. This is probably one of my favorites. Uh, because now with this new session view, we can actually still see our instruments below. Perfect use case for that would be this session where I can see my bass, the clip of the bass, and still play the instrument, which is really dope. So we have our new solos, mutes, and locks. So we can actually solo tracks by hitting the S button and get over there and solo whatever we're working on. We can do the same thing with mute. You can mute something. Uh, and then you have your lock where you don't need to hold the S or the M to do any of that. You can just put it on, the, let's say, mute lock. And now when we hit this, it just mutes it right away, which is dope. Then we have our tempo, which is nice here. So we can uh, turn this, change this back and forth like this, which is really convenient. And then we can actually uh, hit the button and then we can actually get our swing amount. So if you want to add some type of element that way and get that NPC type swing, you can do it that way too. Then everything else is sort of the same tap tempo over here. Then we have our metronome. You can turn that on and off just by hitting that. We have our quantize fixed length. Uh, then basically with fixed length, you can record up to how many bars you choose. So you can say two bars, four bars, whatever. Then we have our automate. I leave this on. Basically, if I do any tweaking of the instrument with any of these knobs or encoders, I can basically record that in and it will play back everything that I edited right away, which is nice. Ableton is always listening. So whatever you do, if you're just fooling around, it will capture what you're playing. So for an example, and hit the capture MIDI, it recorded what I did. And not only that, it actually picked up the tempo. So if we come over here, we can see that it's at 93 BPM. And as I mentioned in the previous video, I like this new jog wheel where we can go ahead and toggle over and launch our different uh, scenes here this way. And even in our menus, if we want to load up something new, we can hit this new plus sign now and we can use this jog wheel to bank over. Uh, let's say if we wanted to do a new MIDI track, then we can come over here and let's say go to drums. Then we can come over here and just bank over this way and just load up something and just tap it. And it'll just load up stuff right away, which is a nice touch. Then we have the new swap button. So if we didn't like, like we got this kit here. If we don't like that, then we can come over here and hit this swap button and we can swap this out for a different instrument. Then we can hit this button over here and preview the different kits. So let's load that up. All right, and they could just swap it out that way. Let's talk about the MPE functionality. So that is a big one. So what we can do to demonstrate this is let's pull up an MPE instrument. So with this MPE instrument, we have new functionalities outside of just the pressure. So we can come over here to start to the bottom of the pads with a nice smooth sound. If we slide up, the timbre changes. All right, so that's a nice touch. Then we have the left to right. It's like a pitch bend. Then we can kind of slide all of them over. which is a nice touch. All right, next we're gonna to go to our MPE kits and demonstrate the same thing. So on the bottom of the pad is dry, but as I go towards the top of the pad, the reverb gets introduced. Hear that? 
Same thing with the snare. So if I want some reverb, go back and forth like a. Let's get some reverb, here we go. All right, so let's make a vibe. We're gonna incorporate some of the featured instruments in here in the push three, and then we're gonna add some of our own audio. Nice, so we got some nice audio coming in. All right, so we got a nice drum and bass line. So we got our nice little pad here. Now what we can do is change the scale. So we're currently in the key of F. So I'm gonna change this from C to now we're gonna to go to F down here. Super sick. If you guys are interested in some of the sounds that I use, specifically the drums in this groove here. All right, that is my chill hop kits. I'll leave that tagged for you guys if you're interested in supporting your brother. So if you guys want me to go on an even deeper dive, like let's say a masterclass, type masterclass in the comments and I'll work on getting something like that for you guys where you can purchase it and really just learn the ins and outs of this device, every single button, every single functionality. So just type masterclass in the comments if you're interested. All right, so who is this bad boy for? Who does this cater to? So if you are an Ableton user, especially like an avid Ableton user, then this is definitely gonna enhance your experience in terms of being standalone where you can get your ideas out, transfer those ideas over to the desktop version of Ableton and vice versa. You can do something from the desktop version of Ableton and get it over into here and perform it on the go. That is extremely useful. And of course we have to factor in our budget. So if you have the budget for the standalone, then go ahead and get the standalone for $19.99. Or you can get the controller for $9.99. Now, if you do not care about the MPE functionality and all of the upgrades, then of course the push two is gonna be the best option because you can find it used for like dirt cheap and be able to get the value that way. If you do not use Ableton and you're just looking at this thing as a beat making machine, you might want to weigh out your options before you go into something like this because this is really, even though it's standalone, it's still telling a story amongst other devices. Think about Apple. If you own an iPhone, it's just an iPhone. But if you own a laptop, a MacBook Pro or a MacBook Air, now you're in that ecosystem. This is really pertaining to a family system where if you're in Ableton, then this makes a lot of sense because you're in the Ableton family. But if you just wanna make beats on a machine, then I probably would not recommend this. I would look at either machine, I would look at some other devices like an MPC where it doesn't require a family ecosystem to just run. And same thing if you wanna make beats and perform those beats, then you might wanna look into something like a SP404 there's different options for you to perform your beats without having to stay within the Ableton ecosystem. Now, if you already are in the Ableton ecosystem and let's say you are a church musician or something like that, would I recommend this? My answer is no, I wouldn't recommend this for church because church services run sometimes past two hours. You're gonna be doing multiple songs. You're gonna need a lot of control. I would just use a push two 
and hook that up to your laptop and just be well on your way. If you got value from this video, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to the YouTube channel, turn on bell notifications, especially if you wanna learn how to be an independent musician and artist and make money from your music, this is 100% the channel for you. Thank y'all so much for tapping in with your boy and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.